Okay, so maybe this is redo um, on Fiber Arts here, but I've got a ton of dog bane that I have harvested this in the garage. And I mean, I've got a bundle. This is like a few of them. I've got a bundle to my right here and um, I'm trying to get through these uh, and, and process them uh, for, for projects. I want to do some spinning and some other things. Um, so far, you know, this is what this fiber yields. Dog brain. Uh, it's not dog brain. Dog bane. Uh, apple cyanum cannabinum. Also known as Indian hemp. Uh, is one of the, the strongest fibers you can get. It does have a look-alike. Um... You know, so I've got plenty of fibers, and this is actually for somebody. Um, it's one of the strongest fibers you can get, at least in, in my zone. Zone for you know, the upper Midwest here. And um, you, it's strong enough to make bow strings. And bows are under tremendous tension. Like, again, you could have 90-pound bows, meaning a pound means it, you, you have to be able to pull back with one arm 90 pounds in order to hold the bow steady aim and then release the arrow um and so there's many different plant fibers there's a whole list of them but in my region this is one of the uh, most common and one of the most uh usable uh it's very similar look alike i did a video on that uh the difference between dog bane and and milkweed milkweed does produce fibers too that are fairly strong uh, but it's also milkweed is edible and it has some medicinal properties as well um, dog bane really just has more of a utilitarian pro uh, 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 they yield more utilitarian uh, properties like their fibers versus uh, milkweed which does kind of all three um, and they are kind of a look alike if you don't know what you're doing you could do something medicinally with dog bane. Um, I'm that's above my head, <laughs> but mistaking the two milkweed versus a uh, dog bane is probably a toxic mistake. I didn't say poisonous to some people's body chemistry. It could be poisonous, um, but it's a toxic toxic mistake mistake because uh, uh, apple cyanum or rather. Um, dog bane is is quite uh poisonous or rather toxic but anyways this is how i process this in mass now normally i'm going to take a, a stock here try to find one that's fairly decent i got my garbage can here and again i'm going to use a pair of pliers i could just stomp on these or something like that you know take a rock and crush them but i'm taking my pliers and i'm just kind of crushing them because this is how we're going to loose the fibers from the stock. And as you can see, I'm just going all the way down the shaft. I started at the, the root end and going towards the aerial end or the end that, you know, the, the, the leaves would be on. And sometimes I do it once or twice just to make sure. Now, the w interesting trait about dog bane is that um, when it breaks apart, uh they break apart like in like needles they're they're, sh they're 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 very dangerous actually so as you see my thumb kind of spreading this out i'm doing this very carefully if you choose to do this be very careful because you will get a splinter all right uh the dog bane does not gives give give up give up its gifts uh very readily or without some pain or if you're not careful Okay, because again, even this piece here, this shaft is breaking off, it's coming off like a needle. All right, which might be useful, you know, depending on what you're working on. That's why I have my trash can right here. But what I do, and it's very similar to nettles, is I just kind of break and peel off. And then I can get rid of that. And now I take the fibers that are left here, or the bark, the bark and fibers, and I pull away from the shaft and then break and again these are splintering off 
somewhat nicely, but I had to be careful because I don't want to get a splinter. Um, but just, you know, I've harvested, I harvested these years ago and they just been sitting in the garage. It's time for me to do something with them and process them. Um, even if you harvest them and let them dry, they're liable to break this way. All right, so you got to be very, very careful when trying to get the, trying to loose the fibers from the shaft, okay? Because these are coming up very splintery, okay? And even as you process the um, fibers, once you do release them. So it, it's a bit of a time consuming process in a way, um, in that you have to be careful doing it. Again, even this is a small one here. This is kind of I'm gonna strip that away, but you see these nice fibers that are being released. This is what we want, but we gotta be careful. picking off some of the fibers away and then I break them down and then release the fibers. Um, <laughs> stinging nettle is a little bit more forgiving in that you don't have to worry about getting a splinter in the finger or under your nails or anything like that. Um, you know, again, that's what I'm picking away right now is these shafts, right? And the best time to harvest these is like early uh, winter when they go dormant. Um, I believe dogbane has a, a bi biennial life cycle, meaning it, 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 it starts out young and grows for a year and it comes back for the second year. That's when it gives away um, in their seed pods. Uh, little, you know, seeds, you know, give, gives away the seeds for propagation, for propagation. Um, and so usually by that time, and they grow around wooded, uh, excuse me, muddy areas, um, next to lakes and things like that, they're almost, they're very, very similar to milkweed, very, very similar. And you just, you just have to know the subtle, know the subtle differences between the two. So anyways, I've got my work cut out for me, but this is what that particular stock yielded me is a bit here that I'm adding to my bundle. And then when I add to my bundle here for this, what I like to do before I go through any, you know, I'm just breaking off some of the shaft. All right. So I'm just kind of rolling it between my hands and you can see on my sweatpants here what, what comes off of this. Right. And people can beat this. There's all kinds of farm tools that you can use to get to separate the the shaft and the um the bark from the uh the fibers all right which is very fine but even if i was just to twist this alone right just to give it a little twist again it's still pretty strong as a fiber right um i'm going to refine this a little bit more i'm going to do more refining uh, to this again, I, I'm, I'm going to add it to another bunch that I have Which is here that I've worked and you can see the more you work it the finer it gets uh, Again, I'm just doing this very very primitively although in the house, right? <laughs> nice air-conditioned house apartment um, And notice I got the tarp because you get this in your carpet. It's gonna be a problem You don't want nobody stepping on and getting uh, splinters and things like that um, but yeah, I just take these stocks and, you know, just take my pliers and I just crunch them flat. And you can see this is already starting to splinter. So, you know, I put a television show on, maybe I'm watching one of my favorite YouTubers on TV, uh, and this is something busy work that I can do while at least listening, because I have to be careful, uh, to the television or someone that I'm learning knowledge from. Again, this is a big old stalker, this is dangerous. You know, I, I, again, I could probably get some fibers off of here, but I'm not even gonna waste time with that. But, you know, in a pinch, you can get some fibers off of here. And um, yeah, so again, just to reiterate, 
technique for extracting fibers off of plant stalks like nettles, milkweed, dogbane, so on and so forth. Like that. Okay, so I'm taking my hand and I'm just and again I actually really really enjoy dogbane working with it. I mean again to extract the fibers can be a bit of a challenge. But we'll get what we can get.